Thanks for stopping by. I'm so excited to share my newest recipe with you. Are you ready for this? It's boulangerie potatoes. It's a really long French word. Basically, it's sliced potatoes cooked in butter and chicken stock in the oven with onions. It's absolutely delicious. And of course, we're not using real butter because we're dairy free here. We're using Earth Balance. When you're gluten-free and you like potatoes, you may find that potatoes become a greater part of your diet. This is a dish I love because it gets a little boring just, you know, baked potato or roasted potatoes. Don't get me wrong, I love those, but I'm always looking for something different. And what's really amazing about this side dish is the potatoes are cut so thin, it has a lightness to, to it when you eat it. So you don't feel like you're eating, oh, I'm eating a baked potato. It goes great with just about any protein, pork, chicken, beef, you name it. Okay, so this is an easy recipe. There are a few steps though. So what I've done already to prepare is I chopped the, the thyme, the fresh thyme very finely. I uh, minced the garlic. I got the chicken stock all measured out. I got the earth balance, two different measurements of that ready. And I have peeled uh, the potatoes. I've washed, peeled and rewashed the potatoes. Now you're going to want to be careful that you don't do that too soon. If you do it right before you start everything else, you'll be fine. If you do it much before that, you may have some icky brown potatoes and nobody wants that. So the step I'm going to do now is I'm going to grate the onion. Yes, I said grate the onion. I'm not slicing, I'm not dicing, I'm not chopping, I'm grating it. And the reason I'm doing that is I want the onion flavor and I want a really subtle onion texture. I don't want that crunch of the onions in the potatoes. So you've got two options for grating these. You can use the flat grater or the box grater. I can't remember which one I like best, so I'm just gonna get started with the box grater. I've got the onion peeled and cut in half. And I'm using the large grate and I, I put it in a big bowl. So one, I didn't splatter it all over my cutting board. And, and two, it, it's going to be in a bowl when I'm done and I don't have to gather it. So I just grating, grating, grating. It's going to stick to your grater a little bit and it's going to be a little wet. Now I'm going to try this one, see if I like it better. Like I said, I don't remember. Oh yeah, I like this one better. I can actually see what I'm doing and it's, it's a little easier on my, my hand it feels like. If you don't have one of these flat graters, I will put the link to, um, to it down on Amazon in the description below. I absolutely love it. I use it for so many different things. Now don't think that you have to use every single square inch of this half of um, onion here because if you do, you may grate your fingertips and nobody wants to eat that. Okay. I'm going on to onion number two. Okay, the eyes are, I should say the eye is starting to water. I only wear one contact and I find that the eye without a contact waters the eye with a contact. No water, no crying, I could cut onions all day. I used about as much onion as I want. It was getting a little, um, a little close to my fingers and I decided to stop. I have enough. Like I said, it's going to be wet. Don't worry about that. We're going to use whatever juice that's left over after we saute these to put into the potatoes. Okay, I've recovered from grating the onions. My eyes are now dry and I have my glasses on because I'm dealing with a large blade, a mandolin blade. And I urge you to never mandolin without a guard. It's very dangerous. Um, even chefs who do not use guards are cutting themselves all the time. And why would you want to cut yourself? There's no reason. So I have my potatoes, they're all peeled. I'm gonna cut them in half, cut one in half. And then I'm going to attach the flat side to my guard. I have the mandolin set at 1 8 inch. You can do them a little thicker if you want. They will take a bit longer to cook, um, but I find 1 8 works really well. And then you just kind of slide it back and forth. So you can see I have beautifully sliced thin potatoes. I'm going to do that with all my potatoes, cut them in half, slice them and add them to this bowl. And then we're going to head over to the stove and sweat our onions. Okay, we're at the stove top. I'm meeting, I'm heating my saute pan up to about medium and I'm going to add the butter, the earth balance, I should say. Get that all melted. Now we are just really softening and sweating these onions. We do not want any color on them whatsoever. So once this all melts, we will get the onions, the garlic and the thyme in the pan. 
Okay, we're almost melted. I'm gonna go ahead and get the onions in. Now, like, again, it's gonna be a little wet. That's okay, because we're gonna use this later on, whatever moisture's left over. I'm gonna make this in a, a bit of a flatter layer here, going up a little higher on the heat. I'm gonna get the garlic in. Whoops. And the thyme. And this is fresh thyme. You can use dried thyme. I'll have a conversion for how much of that to use if you're not using fresh in the recipe, which is in the description below. Oh my, this smells. Oh, thyme and butter and onion and garlic. Is there anything better? Okay, I'm gonna let this sit for a few minutes and soften. Okay, it's been softening for a little bit. You can see I've got some good heat or I'm getting some bubbling. So I'm gonna just hit it with a little bit of salt and pepper. I'm gonna season as we go. And I'm gonna give it about a minute more, if even that, and then I'm gonna get it out of the pan into a bowl so it can cool a little bit. So we're gonna be using this to add to our potatoes and we don't want it to be too hot. Okay, the onions are all softened. They're, they're uh, cooling off a little bit here. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure your oven is preheated to 375. Probably should have done that before we got to the uh, stove with the onions, so make sure you do that. You're gonna wanna use a oven-proof pan, a casserole, um, a Dutch oven, call it all different things. That's not too big and not too small. If it's too big, um, the, the potatoes are not gonna sit in the liquid and they're not gonna cook properly. And if it's too small, the same thing's gonna happen. The potatoes will be um, sitting up above it. Either way, you're gonna have the same result. So we're gonna, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grease the casserole with some earth balance so that we don't have any stickage. I don't think we're gonna have a lot of stickage considering how much earth balance uh, we're using in here, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do this just to be safe. Okay, so this is a, a layering um, type, of, a layered dish. So the first thing we're gonna do is, is get a little bit of onion in the bottom here. And it, there is a little bit of moisture in here, that's fine, use that up, that's great flavor because remember we had earth balance when we were cooking this. Um, and so that's just gonna add more flavor to the dish. And we're gonna take our potatoes and put a layer of potatoes down. And you don't wanna really overlap them too much, maybe just a smidgen. Uh, we're just doing pretty much a flat layer of potatoes, slightly overlapped. Okay. And then I'm gonna hit this layer with a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. And then I'm gonna start the process all over again and get some onion in here. Uh, onion thyme garlic, I should say. And there are more. More potatoes. Salt and pepper. Well, salt, pepper. More onions. And you're just gonna repeat this till you have either no more onions, no more potatoes, or both. It should work out to be pretty equal. Um, and then we're going to put it in a 375 degree oven, uncovered for 30 minutes. Okay, I'm about to put my last layer of potatoes on, and I don't know if you can see this, but we're starting to get a little brownage on the potatoes. So if, when I said be careful how soon you slice you peel and slice before you use them. I was not kidding. You're gonna wanna end with a layer of potatoes. You do not want the onion mixture to be on the top. It'll probably brown too much. You might have some burnt bits. Okay, so I've got all the, I'm using all my potatoes. That looks really good. I'm gonna hit it one last time. Those top layer with some salt and pepper. So now we have two more steps and then it's going in the oven at 375 for 30 minutes uncovered. I have the chicken stock and if you wanna use vegetable stock, work just as well. And if you're serving this with beef, you could use beef stock too. We're gonna to serve this with pork. So uh, since we don't have any pork stock, which really isn't a thing, I'm using chicken stock. I'm just gonna pour it in here. The goal is to cover the, almost cover the potatoes completely. It should cover just about three fourths to a little bit more than that. And the final step is I've cubed up some earth balance and I'm gonna put the pieces of earth balance um, around the top of the potatoes, distribute it somewhat evenly. And that's gonna melt in the oven and create a, a nice crispy goodness. 
Okay, it's been 25 minutes. I'm gonna check on the taters and see how they're doing. What I'm looking for, well, look at that. I'm looking for most of the, um, the liquid to absorb and they haven't yet. And I can tell that these are not tender enough yet. So I'm gonna put it on for about 10 more minutes actually going to go up to 400 for 10 more minutes. Set the timer for 10 and then I'm going to check them. Okay, they've been in for another 10 minutes. Let's take a look at them. Oh, they're looking good. We still have a little moisture, which is fine. You don't want it all to be gone. Um, that looks really good. So I'm going to put them on broil for, I don't know, keep an eye on them five to seven minutes. So I want to get some really good color on the top layer of potatoes. They've been broiling about, I don't know, five, seven minutes or so. I've been checking them to see, and they are absolutely perfect. Look at that. Oh, the color. Oh, my goodness. I cannot wait to eat these, but I have to cool them off first. So on top of the stove, they go to cool down. This has got to be my favorite part of every video is eating the food. These turned out amazing. I cannot wait to taste them. I put some chopped parsley on top for garnish, which makes them look really pretty and adds a little bit of flavor. So I'm going in. Let's see how delicious these are. Mmm. Oh my God. So much flavor. So tender. And because they're sliced very, very thinly, they're not filling like, you know, like I said, like a baked potato would be. I gotta take another bite. Mm. Oh, so good. Garlicky, oniony, thymey, buttery. Well, not real butter, fake butter. Oh, so good. You're gonna love these. Like I said, they go with just about any protein uh, meal that you're gonna come up with. Meatloaf would be good, a roasted chicken, pork chops. Serve them with anything, serve them by themselves. They're really delicious. And if you serve them by yourself, themselves, you may consider one, putting some crumbled bacon or some um, crumbled pancetta, some cooked pancetta on there. That would be a nice addition um, when, if you're gonna eat them as a meal. I literally could eat this as, as a meal, but I think I'm gonna serve it with some pork chops. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do and hit the notification bell so you know when we have new videos. The full recipe is linked in the description below or go to gfexplorers.com where you'll find this and so many other cooking videos and recipes. And until next time, happy eating.